welcome to another of my coffee break uh, videos I hope you enjoy it this is not perhaps the most serious of my art history videos but I'm going to take a light-hearted overview of the various ways that nudes have popped up in the visual arts over the years how people react to pictures like these differs I'm not a psychologist and I'll leave you to make your own conclusions however perhaps reflect on your own hang-ups. The Venus of Willendorf was carved about 25,000 years ago and whether it's a religious figure or just someone's ideas of an erotic ornament is of course unknown but as they say there's nothing new under the sun. Here's a very famous statue the Victorian Albert's cast of David. There's been a favorite with visitors since its arrival in the museum in 1857 donated by Queen Victoria. The first thing that she did was to demand a fig leaf to cover his penis. However, to the delight of today's visitors, the fig leaf has been removed and the life-size statue can be seen in its full glory. On the subject of Queen Victoria, she did actually purchase a number of paintings containing attractive and nude ladies for the enjoyment of her husband, Albert including these and even a sensuous statue the thought is that she felt Arbot needed a bit of a catalyst to encourage his husbandly duties however his own thoughts might be concluded from a statue made of him as a Greek warrior which he thought displayed too much leg and he had banished from public display this is an interesting one, the portrait of Madame X, done by John Singer Sargent of the uh, young socialite um, Virginia Gatreau. It, when it was painted it caused a social downhill for both artist and the subject. It was originally painted with a right dress strap down over her shoulders, shown by the x-rays. This was considered so shocking that the said strap had to be repainted before it could be accepted for public display by a gallery. Here's another painting of this beautiful lady. This is an interesting painting. Painted in the mid-1800s and titled Women of Phoenicia, two women gaze out to sea, possibly at their departing loved ones. However, paintings like this were really done to cater for the demands for erotic images. Do women normally wave goodbye to their loved ones, dressed only in sheer night dresses? Here's another one, same style. On the subject of erotic images, here is what is in my opinion one of the finest, illustrating that nudism is not a requirement for eroticism. Photographed by Man Ray in the early days of photography, it does remain a classic. And for some reason not known to me, this man emerging from the lake in Pride and Prejudice, as rated by some ladies as the most erotic scenes in film. The most famous semi-nude female is of course the Venus de Milo. Pass with hardly a glance by millions of tourists traipsing en route to glimpse the Mona Lisa in the Louvre. Cannot resist this cartoon of art experts appraising a painting. Uh, sometimes the truth lies in the obvious. Art has, however, ventured into the world that we would today consider perhaps pornography. Here from the ruins of Pompeii, a fragment from the wall and some wall carvings that cover the thousand-year-old temples at Kajura in India. Have a look at Lunch on the Grass, painted in 1863 by Manet. Caused an outcry at the time, and even nowadays, we do feel uncomfortable with it. Maybe that was just the idea of the painting. So let's end this exploration of unclothed people in art with another look at Florinda and ponder how the total removing of clothing maybe also removes sexuality. And I hope that this has given you something to think about. Thank you for watching this video and keep your eye on 
for my others.